Inmates, how is life behind bars? Not these bars, but these bars. I know it's still winter, we're in February, at the end of February, but there are signs of spring on the way and bikes are starting to head out onto the road. So please be safe behind those bars. So today I've got a customer who's gonna be with me shortly and he's asked me to fit a dial dim and two S4s to his bike. We're gonna use fork mounts, which I've got here on the table next to me. This is a lot different to any of the, of the jobs I've done in the past. Now, if you remember back about 18, months ago those of you who have been subscribed to me for quite a while I did a video about if you've got no can smart or easy can well then watch this video because we're going to show you how you can have any light on your bike specifically the Denali range without an easy can so if you have got, if you've got a bike like a well I'm not going to mention bikes because I know Hex who make the easy can and the can smart they are working on new easy cans all the time so without mentioning bikes I'm just going to say if you've got a bike where there's not a compatible easy can or can smart for it well then you have to look to the next best thing if you want to have extra auxiliary lights on your bike in that case 18 months ago we used a premium wiring harness kit I get a lot of emails I always get lots of emails uh, generally with confusion used people because there's a lot of different detail out there on what people should buy and when you see something like a d4 kit you automatically think oh i need that kit well no you don't if you've got a bmw or a ktm any of the bikes where we've got an easy can or a can smart for it well then you don't need to buy the kit not unless you want to have a switch on your bike, not unless you only want to have uh, one or two settings of intensity on your bike. If you've got a bike that's compatible with an easy can, well then I really advise you to buy the easy can, which then controls your lights. So let's get past that because we want to talk about this dial dim. Going forwards, Denali went away, so back, back to the drawing board if you like, and said, right, we need to improve our wiring harness kit, which is part of the kit, which you would buy if you had a bike that couldn't take an easy can. And we're gonna make this new kit called the Dial Dim, which is going to try and replicate, that's why I see it, try and replicate what the easy can can do. So with this product here, we can set the light intensity right from zero up to 100%. We can attach two pairs of lights. So if you wanna put a pair of S4s, a pair of D4s for it, you can do that. Now it's important to note, the reason why we have these, these devices like the premium wiring harness kits with a relay on there or a dial dim, which has got a built-in relay in there, is because we can't just splice these lights directly into our lights wiring. If we do, we're gonna cause all manner of problems. I've heard reports of people trying to tap in their S4s. I only had an email this week, actually, a guy with his Yamaha 9GT, is it? And he's literally trying to wire in his S4s directly to his wiring harness on his bike. The effect was he couldn't get the brightness that he should be getting from it. And it is also reducing the brightness in his OEM Yamaha light. So we are not actually taking power from the wires feeding the headlights. What we are doing is we're splicing into those wires to take a tiny, tiny minuscule feed of power to trigger the dial dim module which then takes the power from the battery which then feeds your new lights on your bike that's how it works that's that's kind of like in very simple terms without going into too much detail and confusing everyone that's how these products work with this it's not completely plug and play it is plug and play on the outputs so once it's on your bike you can plug and play any denali pod to this dial dim system but when you connect it to the bike it's very simple we connect it to the battery and then we have a load of trigger wires on there so we've got a trigger wire for the ignition so when the ignition comes on the lights come on we've got a wire for full beam so when we hit full beam we can set the intensity of our lights s4s in this case to come on at 100 percent intensity and we can configure it all so it works off the oem switches on the bike as well now the bike i've got coming in any second now is a honda crf 250l so the chap called me um sounds like a real nice chap he's got a he sounded very familiar on the phone actually it's quite it's quite, it's quite strange quite peculiar so I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting him actually i think he's i think that's him now we can hear him coming now Bit of a noisy bike, isn't it? Anyway, okay, so whilst he's coming, just to finish off, we can also connect the trigger wire to the horn, so when you hit the horn on the bike, we can make the light strobe, just like the Easy Can can make light strobe as well. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. 
You look really familiar. No. You do, you look very, very no. familiar. Do, do, do I know you? Uh, <clears throat> I don't recognise you or anything, no. Right, okay. Um, uh, okay, sorry, sorry, a little bit awkward, a little bit embarrassing that is, isn't it? Anyway, so before we get started on your bike, what we're going to do, what, what I want to ask you the question which I ask all my customers, is do you ride more in the day or, or ride more in the night, just so we can make sure the S4s are the right choice for you? Well, basically, I, I ride a lot during the daytime, but I want to be seen more because the main front headlight at the front, uh, it's just not, I just, I just find them cars are pulling out on me a little bit when I'm out on the road. I do take this off-road quite a bit. I'm planning to take it off-road a lot more. Uh, but it's when I'm on the road, I just I don't think cars can see me all that well because of the, um, the front headlight just isn't bright enough. So I want to be brighter for, for daytime use. Um, but also, it'd be good if it, if it was a little bit brighter just so I could um, see further when I am out and about at night time just so it lights up the way even more because the headlight on the front really is pants to be completely honest so I was probably thinking something around around your S4 range if possible so you know I, I think the D4s would be too big so anyway I'm going to leave it with you um, I can borrow your bike yeah cool right okay I'll have it ready in a couple of hours so I'll, 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 I'll see you later then I'll be honest, that fella looked very familiar. I just don't know where I've seen him before. Anyway, now he's gone, we're gonna quickly roll this into the barn, spend an hour, maybe two hours on it, and get this dial dim on the bike. I've got thoughts about put, putting the S4s somewhere around about here, because what we're going to do is, is put the, if I take the fork, the fork mounts out. So there's a fork mount just there, if I show you that nice and close up. See that? So really high quality. Something to remember, whenever you buy crash bar mounts or fork mounts or any of the Denali mounts from me, you always get a strip of rubber. Now you won't get this from anywhere else, not unless they start doing it and copying me. But um, I like to put protective rubber strips that you can take the sticky back off, line it on the inside so you won't mark your forks or your crash bars. So with mine, you'll always get that in the packet as well. I was thinking possibly, keeping them quite high up and mounting this fork mount just up here. By the way, this is the larger fork mount of the two. This is the one which is 50 to 60 millimeter. So by having those on there, we're gonna put the S4s on each side, hook up the dial dim to it, connect it to the battery, splice into the headlight and the horn. Let's just crack on, let's get it in the barn and crack on with it, okay? Good looking fella that chap though, wasn't he? So just so it starts taking shape, I'm gonna get the, the S4s in place. I haven't even started taking any, any of the bike apart yet. It, it actually won't need to be taken apart that much anyway. So there you go, yeah, you can see the rubber insert that comes with these. Just gives it a little bit more protection. You do have to tighten it up a little bit more just to make sure the, the bracket is rigid. So that's the only downside to having rubber insert, but you are protecting the surface that it's actually being mounted to. So 
So there you go, that's on nice and tight. Now I'm going to get the other one on the same. Right, so I'm just making sure these are exactly the same. Yep, they are. Tighten this side up first. And then if we want to, we can alter this because that's an extra adjustment we can use to get the lights really level right at the very end. So I'm just going to make them nice and square for now. Unfortunately, I haven't got one of those um, paddock stands to stick underneath the... It's not, is, it called, is it called a paddock stand for a, a motocross? Yeah, one of those stands to put the bike on so it'll uh, stand up nice and central. And now we have adjustment. How does that look? It looks wonky, that's what it looks. <laughs> so we can make further adjustments to these a little bit later on. That's all right, let's get the other side done. Oh, he's got an EJK electronic jet kit, fuel management kit, nice. Think he's done well with this bike, pretty good. Upgraded the exhaust, FMF exhaust with, um, it's not a power bomb, it's something else bomb. It's got the full system on there basically, and it's got the, the fuel management module in the back as well. And that's why it sounds really, really good. I've just realized because I've moved the bike slightly so I can gain to the other side of the, the bike easy, more easily that these get in the way. When I turn the handlebars, the new S4 pods are actually colliding with the side fairing here. So we've got a choice. I can either bring this down to here, which I don't like the idea of because of the amount of you know, deep puddles and mud. I know they're waterproof lights, but I've already ridden this a couple of times. Oh, sorry, it's not my bike. <laughs> I believe the person who's ridden this a couple of times already dropped it a couple of times, just going down green lanes and stuff. Really, I want to try and get that right up the top. You'll notice as you turn the handlebars on this bike, the headlight goes with it well. So this is gonna be great as we're steering, the lights are gonna go around corners, but as you can see, that is touching here on the right. So I'm gonna try and bring them all the way up to the indicators. One of the good things with the dial dim is that when we actually do indicate, we can program the light that, that you're indicating on, we can program that to go off, but that one stays on. That's one of the beautiful features with the Easy Can, and somehow they've managed to put that feature into the dial dim as well. So we're gonna see that working once it's all connected. Okay, you can see I've moved it just here. Uh, so it looks a bit weird now, so I need to change the side to here. So this is the, the best place I can find for it unless I decide to take the indicators off, which I can't do, or replace them with something else, and actually mount the lights where the indicators are and put the indicators up on the... I could always do that, actually, put some T3s up here. Do you know what? I might do that. I can't do it today. I haven't got time to do it today, but I think I might put some T3s up here because they have a running light inside these, a DRL. So I put T3s there and then mount the S4s there. That would look sweet. So for now, we have put the fork mounts just here. I've test I've measured the range of travel on the fork, because obviously you've got the, the fork guard here. Measuring the full travel, that does slide up underneath here, but it doesn't actually hit the, the fork mount itself. So we have got full range there on full compression of the suspension. So that's where it's gonna go. I'm just gonna thread this wire through and get the other side sorted and then get the dial dim on. Okay, so I've remounted the, the lights. So the whole reason for, for this is because it was conflicting with the inside. So now I've got full clearance all the way around. It's not touching the fairing whatsoever. And if I put the kickstand up and give it full suspension, I appreciate it would go further than that when I'm riding and going down bumps, but I have measured the fork, so we should be absolutely fine. <laughs> we'll just lean it up against the worktop. So and now I've got access to the battery and uh, I can, I'm gonna find a space for the dial dim up here somewhere, run the harnesses through to here, take the front headlight off to access the wires going into the headlight so I can access the full beam wire. I've seen the horn at the front already over there. 
so I can access the positive wire on the horn. So it's a case of just like connecting the dial dim up to the battery. So here's the dial dim here. I haven't even connected one of these yet, so it's the first time for me. All the outputs are on it. That's got to go to the battery, so we know that's how far it's got to be from the battery. That's absolutely fine because we've got nice long extension leads to go to the, the S4 lights at the front. There's my four outputs. That's a, a lead for one of the lights, and then this is the lead for the triggers, which plugs into one of these wires here. So they, off, they go off to all the trigger wires, which they're all labeled, so it's nice and simple to actually install. I'm just gonna crack on and get it on, and then I'll show you everything once it's all on there, okay? For now, I've just moved the EJK electronic jet kit. So it used to be there. I've moved it across to the back. So it's got a little piece of Velcro on the back of that. The dial dim's gonna sit right here because there's a bit more space under the seat for it to go there. I could probably put it down there if I wanted to. I, I don't think I can put it here. This, this is kind of like a, an area for air to come out so we, we don't i'm not a mechanic so please don't don't quiz me but um i don't think it's a good idea to block that hole so we're going to keep that there i've got the battery cable coming through and here it is here so i'm just going to pull out the fuse and connect this to the battery so we've got power going to the dial dim okay always take off a negative first ground and always put on ground last. Make it as tidy as we can. Put the fuse back in. So that should be fine underneath the panel. Okay, so we're now going to put the actual dial dim controller on I'm gonna put it onto the handlebar over here because obviously this, this is my light switch is here. We're gonna have this here. It's important to note, and I mentioned it again at the end, that you don't actually have to use this. We need to program the lights using this dial dim. It's the only way we can program the module that's at the back. But once we're happy with the setting, for instance, 20% for dipped riding light at nighttime and daytime, and then 100% for full beam, well then when this is all working, it's all gonna be working off our OEM switch on the handlebar. It doesn't matter what bike you've got, this is gonna work that way. Uh, and you can literally just forget about this. You don't have to touch it again to, to, to adjust it. But if you wanted to, we can dim the brightness on the fly if we really wanted to, but you can literally just forget about it. But it's quite a nice looking bit of kit. It's sitting there, it's gonna be glowing, it's gonna let you know if there's any problems by certain sequence of flashes, which we we'll go through at the end as well. If you can see here, you've got two blue tags and two green tags. On, the, on this blue tag, you've got an, an L for left, and on the red, Sorry, on this blue tag, you've got an L for left. And on this blue tag, you've got an R for right. So this is gonna to go to our right S4, and this is gonna to go to our left S4. Then the green, that's exactly the same, but that's for a second pair of lights. So I'm not using them, so we're just going to, well, what I'm going to do is just make sure it's all nice and tidy under here because I'm a little bit of an OCD when it comes to having tidy wiring, as a lot of you will know. So I'm just going to, put them together and tuck them down there. This is the plug that goes to another harness, which is for all the trigger wires. So I'm going to just leave that there and zip tie it with this one here as well. So this, this one here is for the actual dial dim control on the handlebar. So we're just going to gather these around here so they're all nice and tidy and just zip tied them all to some other wires so they're not going to run away from us. Nothing worse than a rat's nest of wires. That's gonna go underneath there. Now we could run the wires along the side of the battery, but there's already a lot of OEM harness wires along there, which is no problem. We probably can run along there, but it's just a lovely clear route on the right-hand side. So I'm going to focus on doing exactly the same as what we've done over here, but over here, keeping it alongside the, the framework just there. I don't think I'm gonna take the tank off, but I'm just gonna take this panel off and have a look to see whether we can do a tidier job than just poking it up and around. The wire from the front S4 here, I'm gonna bring in the, the other wire from the left S4, I'm gonna bring that across the middle rather than coming down the side. So they're, they're all running down along here. Making a mental note, I know where all the, I know where all the um, 
screws go because I've never taken one of these apart before, which makes it fun. I think the whole housing comes off once that bolt at the front comes off. Is that a workshop manual? <laughs> that is almost off. It's almost off. <laughs> okay, we've got a plug. Okay. There we go. Right, okay, so that's the... I've now got the cable in from the, the dialed in controller. That is now running across the top, down around the side here. It's just basically, as soon as I see some OEM wires, I just join it up. It's so, everything's on display. It's such an easy bike to work on. It's continuing that path along with some OEM wires and cables. There's zip ties that are reusable on the Honda, which is very, very good. And then you've got it, got it come across the top and then it plugged into the dialed dim controller itself. Now I'm gonna thread through the, the trigger wires. No, actually, I'm gonna thread through the light harness wires. Right, I've got all the wires all the way through for the S4. So the S4s, everything's connected to the dial dim really, apart from all the trigger wires. So that's what I'm putting through right now, just over here. And I'm literally going to take these five trigger wires and they've all got posi tap connectors on the end of them. So it's gonna be really easy to connect it up straight to those wires. Don't, don't forget, these are not really, this doesn't work in a way where the wire we're tapping into is powering up the lights. It's not how it works. These are just sending a, a minuscule little uh, pulse along to the dial dim to instruct it, to trigger it, to send power to the lights and do things to the lights like turn them off when you indicate or when you hit the horn, we can make them strobe. I'm just gonna put these through now and once it's all done, I'll show you around everything so you can see it's all the connections and, and stuff. So this is the headlight, I've just taken it off. It's four screws, you got a bolt there, a bolt there, a bolt there and a bolt here on the other side. If you look on the back of here, can you just about see in there? Let me see my finger. You've got three wires, you've got blue, green and white. I've already tapped into the horn as it is and I'll show you that, where that's connected to it and then all I need to do is connect to the indicators as well. I'll probably finish off this job tomorrow as well uh, because I've had lots of distractions, people calling me. Okay, so it's the following day. I'm just come out here, I'm j just finishing off really. I know it looks like it's in a worse mess than it was, but this will take about 10 minutes to put back together again. But just taking the headlight unit off, uh, straightforward, simple plug. I've already attached my high beam wire. I, I just Googled, um, or I went onto YouTube and looked for another video saying CRF 250, and it's really simple to find out where all those trigger wires are. So. I can see there's a blue, a green, and a white wire on the back of the plug. It, it didn't take too much effort, really, just going online and figuring out the green is ground, the blue is the high beam, and the white is your, your dipped. The mistake I've made, and I think this could, could happen for a lot of you out there who might be fitting a dial dim or something similar to your bike, don't use the dipped beam wire at the back of the headlight as an ignition source. I've just been here for about, 10, 15 minutes trying to figure out why my high beam wouldn't work. <laughs> but the guys at Denali are watching this, they're probably thinking, yeah, so I know what you've done, Steve. Right, so um, that ignition source power has to be constant. The, the white wire coming from the dial dim, which says ignition on there, has to be constant. And I found out, with, I don't know whether, whether this is every bike, but for the CRF 250, uh, probably most Hondas, the, when you go to full beam, the, the power to the ignition is switched off. And that just depowers the whole of the dial dim. So everything just turns off. Uh, so I've already seen these working on dipped, but not on full beam. So I've now uh, found, you notice I've got a multimeter here because I'm trying to find a, a triggered, like a switch live. And previously someone has fitted a USB charger to the handlebar and I can see where that's going to. There's a plug under here, under this shroud just here. And you can see where the previous owner has attached this USB charger cable. He has left, he's literally cut off this ground and this positive wire at the, very, at the same length and taped it up. And I've just tested it with a multimeter and they are live, like that is ground and, and positive right there, taped up side by side. So it's 
kind of lucky we haven't had any problems with uh, any shorts under here because they weren't isolated from each other under the insulating tape that was that was around this th th these two cut off pieces anyway i'm going to use these the, the posi tap connectors that come with the dial dim aren't thick enough to go over this so what i'm going to do because i don't need the ground so i'm going to cut that off even shorter and then i'm going to solder my ignition wire to this because i've already tested with multimeter that that registers voltage coming through when I turn the ignition on. So I'm gonna crack on and do that now. There we are, I've just soldered those two together and now I'm just gonna pop a little bit of heat shrink over the top and then just heat that on. Okay, so that is now uh, insulated well. I'm gonna take this back up and coil that together and put that zip tie back on, put the headlight back on and then I'll show you it all connected. Okay, everything is connected now, so I still haven't put it back together again. I've just been checking what the right wire is to make sure we're getting the turn signals plugged in because I want the lights to turn off on the respective side when we indicate. So I'm gonna show you that now. We've got the horn all linked up as well. So everything's now working, so I'm gonna show you that right now. One thing to point out, I don't want to make this a Honda CRF 250 specific video, but these are DRLs. So when you turn the, the ignition on, they come on as a DRL, which means there's three wires going to, a minimum of three wires going to the indicators, ground, a DRL, and an indicator. So using the meter and having the bike turned on, on, basically just 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 sticking the the probes from the multimeter onto the pins inside the plugs that these end up going to just here at the front that then tells me exactly which wire to put the posi tap on and a quick note whilst it's on my mind the posi taps it's a fantastic idea because you're just putting a pin prick into a wire and if, if you want to remove it that's fine it, it the, like the hole practically closes up again but you can just put a bit of tape over it but when you are putting the posi taps on just pay really close attention to make sure you can see the pin driving down through the middle of the thread because there's a gap you can see it and you can make sure that the pins are driving straight into the wire because I've done two today and they've just gone around the side of the wire so just make sure it goes right into it so here we go ignition on lights on the dial dim over here on the handlebar is doing its thing. I've already set the amps for that and set the intensity. So right now I've got it on, that should be 10, that's zero. And then go up, that's 10%, that's, that's 20%. So just put it onto about 20% and leave it. And there's your full beam. And if I indicate left, I've got that turning off. And as I, said, as I mentioned before, you notice how my indicators on this particular bike are DRLs on the front. And if I indicate right, your left, that one side goes off as well. Now, the way the button is on the, on the Honda, I haven't got a flasher. I, I've, all I've got is full beam and dipped. And if I try and flash three times, it's not strobing. So I don't know how I'm supposed to, to, to make them strobe from However, when I hit my horn, they do that. So that's a different strobe to what we get with EasyCan. It's, it's, it's not as, as rapid. It's like, I won't do it again, but you can always rewind and never look at it again. But that's the, the flashing you get when you hit the horn. Right, that's it. Now I'm gonna put it back together again. It's all back together again. So, I'll wait for the sun to drop out of the sky. So we go for a little test ride, turn them on, turn them off. So you can see the difference. I'll do that later. Let's turn the ignition on. And there we have it. So there's dipped, full beam. And it's a much, I don't know whether it's coming out on the camera, but it's much brighter, whiter, crisper light than what's coming out the Honda's headlight. It's what you'd expect from a three wide premium light. So indicate right. My right side goes off indicate left and the left side goes off and then we hit the horn and we've got a strobing light as well pretty cool so let me show you the dial dim and talk you through how this is programmable I'll just double check you can see the s4s on right the s4s are blinking like that because they're at a low intensity so if i put that to full beam now you can see that and it should be quite a good constant just looking at the screen myself <laughs> yeah so here they're just a they're just low intensity 
I can turn them up a fraction, but I do think 20, 30%, because it's different. What you see on camera is very different to what you see here in the flesh. I'm seeing a very yellow light from the Honda OEM headlight, and I'm seeing a very, very white light from the S4s, which is probably one of the whitest lights, apart from the new D3s, probably one of the whitest lights that Denali do, in my opinion. Rather than go through all the settings with you, because there's absolutely tons, look, look, look at them all. You see that? Absolutely loads of different settings, but it shows you what's what. And you're thinking to yourself, well, that's too much to remember. We don't need to remember a great deal. There's some, there's some useful things like when you turn the ignition on, you will see the, the halo flash green. That gives you an indication that the battery is really good health and that it's over 11.8 volts. Now, if your battery was below that, well, then you would get a load of flashing lights. It says eight flashing red LEDs if the voltage is below 11.8. If it's below 10.8, you get four flashing LEDs where, where it misses a bit. Uh, it's, like, it's like a little, if you look there, you can just about see it just there. If it flashes like that, it's like below 10.8. If it flashes like this, all of them flashing, it's, it's below 11.8, and when it, but every time you turn the ignition on, it does that, it does one of those things. That's quite handy, because you, you then get to know the health of the battery as soon as you turn your ignition on. However you set it, if you leave it, that's how it'll stay. You haven't got to keep on resetting it, and you haven't got to keep playing with that halo every time you want to turn it on. So I've got it set to that, to that intensity, I'm happy with that, I'm gonna leave it like that. And I'm just gonna let it go from, from dipped to full beam, just just through the OEM switch on the handlebar, which is great. If you do a double click on the wheel, it will swap to light pair two, but we haven't got a second pair of lights on this bike. Something interesting in here, which um, I didn't know until I was reading up on this last night, is that some of you will know that if you've got an EasyCan or a CanSmart, you can program the respective light to switch off when you indicate, or you can program it to flash when you indicate, which is great if you've got, I'll show you some footage now of my KTM where I've put amber lenses on top of the DM lights. So it flashes when I indicate. Now you can't program auxiliary light pair one, the blue circuit as they call it on the dial dim, you can't program that to flash. It's a preset function only on the second pair of auxiliary lights. So if I wanted them to flash, all I'd do is unplug them at the back from where I've got the, the blue left and the blue right, unplug them and plug them into the green circuits. And then it would still work as it is now, but when I indicate they'd flash instead of switch off. Hope that makes sense and you're following me so far. And obviously if you don't want any of that features, you just don't connect the trigger wire to the respective wire on your indicators. So also on here, it tells you how to set the ampage. So we have a circuit of lights here. The, the S4s, oh, I can't remember the top of my head. I think a pair of them run at around about five amps. I know D4s are at 6.6 .6 amps, so these are gonna be less than that. So it tells you exactly what ampage you need to set it at. So for something like this, I probably advise just, just just stick it on 7.5. Actually, can you, can you put it on 7.5? Um, you can choose between one amp, two amp, four amp, six amp, eight amp. So I'd stick them on eight amp. Actually, there's, there's actually a guide at the bottom here. It says S4 light pods, eight amps. So that would be a good setting to put it on if you put S4s on like me. And I've actually got mine on at eight amps. I did that earlier. So that's all really straightforward and easy to understand as you're looking at all that. You know, it's very, very easy instructions with all the diagrams on there. With the sun coming in, it's very hard to see that dial. Now, if I put my hand over it, I can, obviously, the sun is literally right on it, but it's hard to see the blue uh, light coming through on it, but that's not important. It's not like you can see that on your, on your, on your switches anywhere on the handlebar. As I put my hand over it, I can see all eight blue LEDs are on. That's because I've got it on full intensity. And as soon as I take it, back to dipped, I can see I've got four, I've got four LEDs on. So that actually gives you an idea. You haven't got to keep going to the front to see how bright it is. That's a bit of a plus actually, where this is a, 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 only on this. I've never recommend this over an easy can. I'm just saying have a dial dim if you've got a bike that can't take an easy can or a can smart. Um, but the good thing with this is you can actually see what intensity your lights are on because of that, and it changes from two blue LEDs on the halo to a full set of LEDs on the halo when I go to full beam. So there's dipped at about 20% and full beam. And if I come to the front and just have a look at it, yeah, they're on the very lowest setting. 
Unfortunately, the microphone on my GoPro wasn't working for the night test, so I'm going to have to try and do this the best I can now. So right now, the three, if you look at the dial dim, you can see it's on reduced. That is the S4s on at reduced. That is now with the dial dim turned off, so all you're getting there is the Honda OEM headlight. So we're going to take it, the bike for a spin down some country lanes so you can see exactly what the, the difference between the dial dim and the OEM lights. So this is still the Honda OEM headlight. And it's on dipped by the way. Now that is on dipped with S4s on, so the dial dim is on with the S4s on at about 20%. Now they've gone off again, so that's just the OEM Honda light. That is now the OEM Honda light on full beam. And back to dipped. Full beam, dipped. Now the S4 is on dipped. And now we've got full beam with the dial dim on with S4s. And obviously with the OEM light as well. So this is still full beam. It's a much, much nicer white light. So as you can see the dial dim on my handlebar, it's showing it's, it's on for, in full beam. And you can see the blue light on the dash as well. We're back to dipped, now full beam again, back to dipped. I'm stepping off the bike, thought it'd be a good opportunity to take a photograph. So that there, what you're seeing is dipped beam on the on the Honda light and on the S4s. Now behind me there's a car coming so it's interesting to see what the headlights look like on the bike but as we turn around and look at the car coming down the road how bright that looks. So just turn the handlebars around just so I'm not blinding him. See the difference in the lights between the car. I remember it's a, quite a modern car. I think it's a BMW actually. That is now full beam like a fireball. So back to dipped. And now I've turned it all off, so that is just the OEM Honda light. So let's take a photograph of that as well. And that is full beam with just the Honda OEM light. So they, they are got on about 30 to 40% with the S4s on. Now the S4s are turned off. It's just showing you the difference of the movement as you're turning the handlebar so you can see the lights moving. There's full beam. And let's head back to base. So hopefully this has been used to you and it's going to help you make the decision whether you're going to get a dialed in for your bike. I'm going to wait for that very good looking dashing chap to come back on my bike so he can come and pick it up and take it off. Still can't figure out where I know him from. Anyway, stay safe behind bars. See you in the next video.